first thing that we're going to look at or design objectives actually for this muffler would be to increase horsepower. We want to lower back pressure and we want steady flow. We want to reduce any turbulence in this. We want to reduce noise, which essentially is more of a streamlined flow. And we also want to increase engine efficiency. So we want to maintain a high velocity throughout this muffler system. And what you see up to the right is a stock or an OEM style. So you have an inlet flow coming in from the right, coming out of this perforated chamber, entering into this perforated chamber as it recycles back through, and then out the tailpipe. So if we look, our boundary conditions here are 3,300 inches per cube or inches cube per second. It's a pretty standard flow rate through a muffler. Um, you can find that online in several different locations. Um, so that's our inlet volume flow rate in an environmental pressure outlet, which is basically your tailpipe leading out of the vehicle. So what are we going to expect to see inside of SolidWorks with this? What I'm going to do is go ahead and close out of my Venturi example, and we're going to get into our muffler example. And this is my OEM muffler. So the same way that I did for my Venturi, I went through the wizard, set up my boundary conditions, an internal flow. And what we're seeing here then is my inlet volume flow rate of 3,300 inches per inches cubed per second and my environmental pressure, which is my 14.69 um, pound-feet per inch squared, so my environmental pressure on the outside. Went through, did the mesh, uh, ran the analysis, and here are my results. Let's look at a little bit of additional plots that we can look at inside of flow as well. So again, our cut plot, this is my pressure. And I actually did set up a goal as well. I look for the static pressure at the inlet, static pressure at the outlet, and I do have an equation goal here. Um, so here's my pressure plot. One of the nice things in flow is instead of having to generate multiple plots like I did for the Venturi, one of the things that I can do is we can change parameters on the fly right off of our legend. So I can switch to velocity, select OK, and what we're seeing here is now the velocity plot. I can reorient this with regards to the highest value in the model and the lowest value in the model. So we're seeing these high velocity areas, which are right around 1,815 uh, inches per second, and our lower velocity areas in here. Now, one of the things that I want to point out, if I switch back to pressure, we have an area of high velocity here. We should expect low pressure, which is exactly what we're receiving. We have a low pressure on that side. So we are receiving verification or validation, again, in this model that Bernoulli's principle is being solved and accounted for inside of here. So that's one thing that we can look at is a, is a cut plot. Another thing that we can look at is what is called an isosurface. So an isosurface allows us to see values based on a, on a surface. And for here, I'm looking at pressure, and I'm specifically looking for 4.89. But as I move this slider and I turn on my preview, we can see that we can, we can see where that pressure is located inside of the model. I can also color this by pressure, or I could color it actually by velocity as well. So we're displaying pressure, but showing velocity on that plot. So this is a nice kind of example of where we can see these ISO surfaces and kind of pick up more of a 3D view of what's happening inside of this model. And we can again color this by pressure. We could look at it per velocity as well. So we're seeing the velocity here at 1318. If I slow this velocity down, right, we can see this change. And I hope the animation is kind of updating on your screen uh, as much as uh, it is online. It's a little bit slow over the webinar. But we can see these changes. We can gather this information. So it's a good plot uh, to see. And then finally, uh, one of the ones that you gain a lot of information from, but it's a crowd pleaser when you go to show this to a customer or a manager, would be our ISO lines or actually our flow trajectories. So at this point, we're seeing the flow come in, enter into this chamber, exit into this chamber, 
and kind of recirculate into our um, our perforated pipe here and then out the outlet. I can animate this. So when I play, we can see that it fills, getting some recirculation and it moves back out. Let me edit the definition of this and change from pipes to actually to arrows. And this is a good indicator as well. So we can see these arrows animate a little bit better. So if I play this, what we should see is this flow. So it gives us a live kind of preview of what we're seeing with the flow, what we would come to expect. And one of the things that I'm seeing is these large recirculation areas, right? So we really don't have a constant velocity movement through here. We're getting a lot of recirculation getting a lot of, of pressure drop across this, which is indicating to me lower velocities um, or, or not a constant velocity across this. Any questions up to this point? Um, if, if you have any questions, just please type them into the, uh, into the question dialog box in the GoToMeeting and we can, we can address those. So at this point, let me stop this animation. Let me hide it. Let's compare this to then the aftermarket muffler. So if we go back to our presentation, what did we see? The OEM muffler actually is giving us a 0.66 PSI pressure difference from inlet to outlet. Let me go back in and show you that. Again, we had our goals. Let me do the goal plot for you specifically on pressure drop. And we can chart that as well. So we can chart those options. Here's my table, 0 0.6631 PSI uh, pressure drop. So that's the pressure drop that we're receiving through the stock muffler. We actually want to reduce that. Reducing that is indicating to me that the flow is moving through a lot better. We're seeing these large areas of recirculation from the inlet to the outlet. So we want to eliminate those as well. To do that, what we're going to do is we're going to look at an aftermarket muffler. And this is actually a Flowmaster muffler. They are a simulation uh, customer, um, not specific, excuse me, specifically of 3D Visions, but of SOLIDWORKS in general. But again, the same inlet flow rate, 3,300 inches cubed per second, the same environmental pressure outlet. Let's go ahead and jump back into SOLIDWORKS and take a look at the aftermarket muffler in comparison. So here's my aftermarket muffler. My inlet flow rate is the same. My environmental pressure is the same. And again, meshed it and ran it just like you would expect. Same goals. Static pressure on the inlet, static pressure on the outlet, and a pressure drop equation. Let's go ahead and look at our cut plots here. We can see that actually our pressure drop even though it's colored very similar, is not drastically the same. Um, we can also look at velocity here as well. When we look at velocity, what we can see is we can see more of a continual path of almost the same velocity. So we're gaining this smoothness, smoothness on, the, uh, on the flow. I do have a question that says, how do you get the Flow Express tab to show inside of SOLIDWORKS? It's a good question. If you have full flow, um, the full flow package, you would have to turn that off in the add-ins. Otherwise, Flow Express, if you right click up here, Flow Express should be under, and I do not have it because I have my full flow turned on, should be underneath your Office Products tab. So Flow Express should be here. It's actually a very good question. Um, flow or actually, I apologize, evaluate tab, your flow analysis or your flow express analysis wizard is here. They changed it on me. 2011, I believe, was on the office products tab. Flow express analysis wizard is here. Um, but that's actually a very good question. Flow express analysis allows you to do internal flow. There are limiting capabilities, but everything that you're seeing here, you should be able to try out in express um, when you start needing more capabilities more um, more boundary conditions, more things like that, that's when you graduate into full flow. But yeah, most definitely uh, try that out. Um, that's a good, good point to bring up. 
So flow simulation, what we're seeing on the aftermarket muffler here is this kind of constant velocity through here. And it's, it's a good indicator that we're, we're gaining uh, horsepower, gaining lower back pressure uh, because of this. We can look at the ISO surfaces as well. Um, let's go ahead and look at the flow trajectories through here. And what we're seeing is we, we do see some recirculation here, but we're seeing more of a streamlined effect coming through our muffler. If I edit the definition of this, and let's look at arrows again. And let's go ahead and play this so we can see the travel. So we do have recirculation areas in this region, but for the most part, we're gaining a good flow through this through this muffler system. So the question is, what is the pressure drop? What is the pressure drop in comparison to um, in comparison to the stock OEM muffler? So if I stop this animation, let's go ahead and look at our equation goal. And what we're seeing here is our value is now 0.28 in comparison to the 0 0.6, uh, 0.5 that it was before. So we're gaining flow through this muffler by doing this. So we're now at 0.28 PSI uh, pressure difference between the inlet and the outlet. And we have smaller recirculation areas inside of this muffler. So we're, we're gaining a better understanding of what's going on with our design. We're actually proving out that our new design works better than the OEM. This is proof to the customer. This is proof to um, re resale shops that you're trying to sell to. You're proving to yourself that your design is working well.